What's happening? Steve here, and today I am going to take you on a 360 tour of the interior of the Ford Bronco Sport as we take it for a test drive. Now, this specific one is the Big Ben version of the vehicle, so I'm going to kind of talk about the different features that it has as the drive is going on. But if you're new to 360, never experienced it before. If you're on your cell phone, you can take your finger, swipe to look around. If you're using the YouTube app, you can even rotate your phone looking up and down as we go. It's kind of neat the way it works. If you're on your desktop, you'd also have the flexibility of taking your mouse and clicking and scrolling around as we go. But one of the nice things is the way that this thing is shot, you technically don't even need to do any of that if you don't want to. So let's have a little bit of fun. Now, as I mentioned, so this is the big bend version of the Bronco Sport, which means that we have, so cloth seats, we've got single zone climate control, we've got our Sync 3 media screen on top of that. So lots of things that are gonna be standard. There are some things that are optional on top of that. So this specific one also has what's known as the Ford Copilot 360 Assist Plus package. <laughs> I feel like this is like an Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. situation. Like we need to try to come up with like some sort of like a shorter version of that system, but it's amazing. And the reason why it's amazing is because it's got the adoptive, adaptive cruise control system. And that adaptive cruise is essentially going to be your set it and forget it cruise control. So let's say you sit it at 60 kilometers an hour on just regular city streets or 100 kilometers an hour on the highway. It's going to hold you at that set speed. So it's a very smart system from that perspective. I love it though. Ah, nice. One of the cool things is that we do have the flexibility of going fully digital for the speedometer inside of this thing. We can switch it out between miles, kilometers, whatever the case may be. It's kind of nice. But some of the technology inside of this is kind of cool. Like inside of the Big Ben version of the Bronco Sport, we've got, so this one has the added convenience package and a few others. So we've got a reverse sensing system. There's a wireless charge pad. And this one has the optional sunroof. It's kind of nice and it opens it up nicely like it's a good amount of space it doesn't open up the full way but it just gives it a nicer look overall when you've got that sunroof opened up there's just something about having the roof open it's just it's there it's big it's bright it's like oh hello i'm here it's kind of cool now some other standard technology that's going to be inside of the bronco in general we've got our blind spot system so it lets us know if anybody's entered the blind spot on either side of the vehicle We've got a little orange highlight that's gonna show up in our side view mirrors, letting us know that somebody's in our blind spot. So it's a very smart system from that perspective. Oh, this is nice though. Nice, it's comfortable. The Big Bend version of the Bronco Sport is going to have cloth seats. And then we've got a few different options for looks and things like that with different color choices and materials depending on which version of the Bronco Sport you're in. This is kind of nice though. Oh. Here we go. Okay, so let's go through some other things. So we've got like this nice metallic highlight along the door and it even follows all the way through the dash as well. It kind of circles through the center stack. It looks fairly sharp. We've got the options, so some exterior things. We've got a little button for our fog lamps. So fog lamps aren't standard in the Bronco Sport. They are available optionally, but it's still kind of nice that it's available optionally inside of it. Um, inside of the Bronco Sport in general, we get to the Badlands version of the vehicle. We'd have the option for the front facing camera. So the, the time that I'd really recommend the Bronco Sport Badlands, if you want a more powerful engine, because it's got the two liter EcoBoost versus the base, the Big Bend, and then the Outer Banks, which has the 1.5 EcoBoost as well. And then, so I'd go for that one if you want the beefier engine. And then if you want the front facing camera, uh, it's got bash plates on top of that. So if you're going to be taking your Bronco Sport off-road, I would definitely recommend looking at the Badlands version of the vehicle if you're never going to be taking it off-road. So it's strictly going to be like a regular daily driver and you're just going to be taking it on the highway, etc. Any of the other versions of the vehicle will probably be sufficient. I think for most people, it's really going to be, do you want the more powerful engine? Are you going to be taking it off-road? Like those are the questions you have to ask yourself. I'm looking at the car in general. So the Bronco Sport, it is, it's a great ride. It's super fun. It's got that, that like older boxier style look that the old version of the Escape had. So if you're a bigger fan of that older, that boxier style look, it's a good option. 
And even if you want to get into some base off-roading, the Bronco Sport is still a good option when you get into like more like in-depth off-roading, like a lot of rugged, aggressive rock crawling. That's when I'd look at recommending the Bronco, the full-size Bronco, instead of the Bronco Sport. So again, I've said it a few times, what are you going to be doing with the vehicle? That's going to kind of dictate which trim level of the vehicle you go for and which options you go for on top of that. I'm going to leave that open. It's kind of nice out right now. It's not too sunny, which is good. It's a little toasty. It's 19 degrees Celsius right now. It's, it's not too shabby. We had a pretty bad, la well, pretty bad. Like, it's all relative, right? Like, we were 38, I think, last week. Ridiculous. Not even, no, it wasn't even last week. It was like Monday, Tuesday. <laughs> Monday, Tuesday, we were like 38 degrees. And then we dropped down to 19. And I'm like, ah, weather, figure yourself out. I want to be like in a bubble somewhere. <laughs> All right, so using the adaptive cruise control system inside of this, I did mention it's optional, but it's very straightforward. So we've got a pad on the left-hand side of the steering wheel, and that's going to let us toggle the system on or off. We've got a distance indicator, so how close or far do we want to be away from the vehicle that's in front of us? And then we can set our cruise, so we can swipe up or down, and that's essentially going to set the cruise at whatever speed we'd like it to be at. So as of right now, I've got it set so that I'm as close as possible to the vehicle that's in front of me. I want you to think of that as like a one Mississippi, two Mississippi rule. So how close or far are you going to be away from the vehicle in front of you? And in this case, I'm essentially going to be like a one Mississippi away. So it's all going to be dependent on you. I mean, we're regular residential driving, which is why I've got it set that way. From there, we've also got our lane centering system. So lane centering, we have to be going a little bit faster than 60 in order for that system to work. But the way that it works is that if the vehicle recognizes the lane markings, it's going to keep us perfectly balanced in our lane. It's amazing. You do still technically have to have your hands on the steering wheel. But where that comes into play is if you were to like turn around for a second, you just get like screaming kids or like you miss something, you kind of like squirrel. You saw like a, you saw something, an accident behind you. And if you start veering over, it's going to keep you perfectly balanced in your lane. It's amazing. Now that's very different from the lane keeping system. So we've got our lane keeping system and then we've got our lane follow system essentially. So what that following system does is that's going to keep us balanced in our lane. The base lane keeping system button on the tip of the turning stick works one of three different ways. So first way, if you start to veer over without signaling, it's going to gently nudge you back into your lane or it'll give you a little bit of steering wheel shake or it's going to do both. So you'll get a little steering wheel shake and it's going to nudge you back into your lane on top of that. So really, really nice. I do love... I love this though. Super comfortable. This is kind of nice. Now the lane centering system is actually active right now and I've got it set at 60 so it's still going. I did mention so you do have to have your hands on the steering wheel. Now Ford vehicles are being built now, some of them, with what's known as the Blue Cruise feature. And that's essentially going to be full hands-free driving. So it is amazing that that's available as an option in some versions and some Ford vehicles. Not available inside of the Bronco or the Bronco Sport as of yet, but I'm like, fingers crossed. I mean, like, hopefully we see that soon because that would be a really cool feature to have inside this vehicle. Just saying, it'd be kind of nice. But this thing is nice. It's feature packed. And like this specific one, like this is very, very, like I, at this point with how much stuff this one has in it, I probably would just upgrade to the Outer Banks instead. You could push it and go to the Badlands or, you know, a couple thousand bucks more in order to be able to get to that. But I mean, you're going off-roading. It's a really, really good option. But even still, like I said, like this one is respectable. Like it's got the 1.5 liter EcoBoost engine in it, which means that we are looking at 181 horsepower and 190 pound-feet of torque versus inside of the ooh, there we go okay versus inside of the two liter turbo or 250 horsepower and 280 pound feet of torque so substantial difference in the power between them but you can't get the two liter engine inside of anything but the badlands version of the bronco sport so what's important for you it's going to be a matter of preference there but this is nice ah comfortable comfortable would be kind of cool if this thing had massage chair seats though oh <laughs> this is kind of nice though now the bronco sport in general is strictly going to be available in four by four so we don't have the option for front wheel drive rear wheel drive etc strictly four by four which i mean realistically like it's still having the four by four option is really useful especially i mean you're taking it off roading it's useful but winter time so canadian winters like north well north american some north american with some some states 
lot of provinces. Winter time driving can be like a little challenging, so 4x4 just handles infinitely better. We've got some good drive modes specifically for winter time driving as well, which is kind of nice. So slippery and then snow modes. Kind of cool. All right. I do love that we can use the adaptive cruise system, though, just on like regular streets. Where I find that system really comes into play is if you're like a teeny little bit of a lead foot. Like if you've got one or two speeding tickets, the adaptive cruise is amazing because it's it's really it's a subconscious play. And the reason that it's a subconscious play is because if the car in front of you slows down, you've got it set up, you know, let's say you're going a buck 20 in the highway, car in front of you slows down, you're automatically brakes. So like subconsciously you're like, I'm still technically speeding, but you're not because the car's got you slowed down. So I love it. It's a great system. Very, very user friendly to use as I mentioned there. But I mean, it's so simple. I love it. Love it. Good system. Minimal road noise on top of that, which is kind of cool. Didn't really notice it that much in here. Like it's it's fairly quiet inside of the cabin right now, which is kind of cool. Gonna be taking it on a little bit of a test drive on the highway there as well. I'm uh, just to kind of see what the what the road is like. I'm taking this thing on for a spin on the highway, which I already said. So let's have some fun in a second, but <laughs> going through some other features. We've got engine start stop, so push button start, but we're on sync three for the media screen. So it's the same thing as the 21 Bronco Sport, but it's great. Like we've got the option for factory navigation, which this one has. We've got support for Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. So even if your Bronco Sport doesn't have it, we would still have the flexibility of using either Google Maps, Apple Maps, or Waze if we're through uh, and, uh, Apple CarPlay. And then if we're using Android Auto, we're looking at Google Maps as our available map option there. So I love it. Like if you didn't get the option for factory navigation, you could you add it in aftermarket? Technically, yes, but here's the technicality there. The navigation is its own separate system. So if you want factory navigation inside of the Bronco Sport, you have to get a fully, you have to fully replace the screen. So the Sync 3 media screen, you literally have to rip it out. You have to find one that has factory navigation and then install it. So it's, it's like a little bit of a pain if you don't have factory navigation adding it in. It's not impossible, but if you want navigation, I just recommend going for Google Maps, Apple Maps, or Waze afterwards and just connect through your phone instead. It's nice though. Nice and simple. We've got our base controls I was showing you there. Sunglasses holder. We've got our garage door programmer. It's nice. Seat's actually surprisingly comfortable for just being like a regular cloth seat. This is kind of nice. And the 1.5 EcoBoost, like it's same thing, has a good amount of power to it. You need the power. But I mean, the, it's a huge, it, I'm like, I'm going to be upfront. Like the, it's a huge night and day performance difference from the 1.5 to the 2 liter. It's just the amount of power difference. Like we're what, 181 horsepower versus 250? So, I mean, like, what, 30% bump there? So, I mean, if, if power's important for you, you're definitely going to want to be in the Badlands. But, I mean, it is. It's a matter of personal preference there. A little bit of fun. And even speeding up, like, it's... It's nice. And one of the cool things, so the car in front of me is going significantly slower than speed limit. So it's 100 right now and they're going 83, 84. I've got the adaptive speed set up for 100 kilometers an hour. So it's kind of neat because I got my hands, like I'm not on the gas brake, whatever. The car's doing everything for me right now. So we can set that preemptively. And then as the car starts to, or as the cars in front of you start to speed up, you change lanes, get out of the way, whatever the case may be. It's going to pick you up to whatever your set speed is. So it's a very smart system. I do love that we can use all of these things in tandem. So I've got the adaptive cruise control setting going, while I've also got the lane centering system going. So this thing is keeping me perfectly balanced in the lane. Hands technically have to be on the steering wheel. There we go. So hands technically have to be on the steering wheel, but it's keeping me fully balanced in the lane as we go. I still have the adaptive cruise set up for 100. Car in front of me is going 85. So it's, I mean, it's keeping me balanced there. But one of the cool things, like I mentioned, this thing's got some power. 
So we need to use that power. It's available there as an option, which is great. And this guy's getting out of the way. And then again, we, we work into our, our distance indicator. So how close or far do we want to be away from the car in front of us? I've still got it set at that one Mississippi rule. So that single bar, we can go up to that four Mississippi away essentially. So it's going to be a matter of how close do you like to get as you're driving. But I mean, I've got it set at 100, I'm going 94. The car in front of me is going a little bit slower than that. So we slow down even more. Speed up a bit. This is nice. This is nice. It's like a sleeper car. And one of the cool things, so the 1.5 EcoBoost is an inline three cylinder, and it also features cylinder deactivation. So what that means is it's gonna help us out with our fuel economy. So as we're driving, if the vehicle recognizes that we're coasting essentially on the highway, it's got the flexibility of shutting down a cylinder as well in order to give you even better fuel economy. So I mentioned it earlier, gas prices are crazy right now. So if you're concerned about gas usage and things like that, just go with knowing the 1.5 EcoBoost, it is very fuel friendly and it also does have a good amount of power. I think for most people, it's gonna be sufficient unless you're like a little bit of a lead foot. But I mean, if you're not, it's a good option. And so road noise, even when I was on the highway there, it wasn't bad. Like, it wasn't bad for what it was. I mean, this thing has the optional 18 inch tire. The standard tire inside of the Big Bend is gonna be a 17 inch. So the 18 inch option is great. All terrains, all seasons. You can do summer tires if you want to. You could technically even look at some beadlock capable aftermarket. So if you need to air down your tires to improve traction if you're going off road, that is available as an option. There's some good accessories, some good things that are available for this vehicle. And like this thing is still fairly new, like it came out last year. So I can only imagine what type of accessories are gonna be available for it over the next you know, six, 12, 18 months. One of the cool things, we've got the option for a tent. So we can have crossbars there, so you can have a tent in this thing, which is crazy on top of that. It's kind of neat. Kind of, oh, did somebody take my spot? Oh yeah, this thing's not getting up there. All right, well, around we go. Where I will stop, nobody knows. This is nice though. All right, and I am stealing this spot, maybe? Nope, this spot, ooh, next to a navigator. Ooh, that's tight, like a tiger. Ooh, there we go, Bronco Sport, ah, oh, that's so good. All right, here we go. Want to I'd say a huge shout out and thank you to Formula Ford giving me access to this vehicle to shoot the video for you guys. You can find the build link for this thing and their contact details in the description below and a few other things, other walker and videos that I've done, looking at all the different videos for the steering wheel cluster, the, the media screen on top of that. But that was a quick look at the 2022 Ford Bronco Sport. What did you think? I love this thing. The features, the functionality, the flexibility, what it's got, it's, it's a good option. I mentioned it, so we've got so many different options for the trim levels, and we've got four options for the vehicle. So this one is the Big Bend version of the vehicle. But if you're going off-roading, the Badlands is probably where you wanna be. If off-roading is not on your radar or a priority for you, the Big Bend or the Outer Banks are great choices. But that was a look at the 2022 Bronco Sport Big Bend. What did you think? If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your social networks, and think about subscribing if you haven't. And until I see you next time, take care.